Bill, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being with thank us. You. Nice background. Thank you. You know, it's I can't get the album in focus, unfortunately, and I can't. It won't stand up there without the sleeves, so it's going to keep falling yeah. over. But, you know, I have to have it, right? Uh, great. <laughs> Look, I got to thank you a million times over for not going the, to the traditional route with the way you told this story. You know, you can imagine this in somebody else's hands and they're just gonna go from a kid to an adult and the ending being the happy finding of the album and that's what it is. Was that always the plan to do it the way you did it? Yeah, I mean, kind of, I, I don't mean to make it sound that simple. I mean, I owe a lot to, um, to Stephen uh, who wrote the original article. Um, and I borrowed some of the things from, certainly from the article, but uh, the structure a little bit too, because he starts and we meet Donnie and then we go forward and see how he reacts in the coming months and and go backward and, and see what it was all like making the movie. So that's what I took from the article. But did, did you go, did you just straight, straight go to writing the script then from the article and from talking to Steve? Or did you get also get the information from Donnie and family as well to your own personal feelings and then write it out? Yeah, a little of both. I mean, certainly um, <clears throat> when I was first presented the thing, I was interested in the story, but I wasn't as hooked. And I mean, certainly interested in the music. But not until meeting Donnie, Donnie did I really, you know, did it click for me. It felt like this is the guy I want to tell the story of. Not just Donnie, but the whole family. I mean, I thought, you know, they were extraordinary people in being not extraordinary. I mean, mm -hmm. they were like regular people. Um, and I, you know, the challenge of being able to translate those people onto the screen without kind of screwing it up was the big challenge, you know, clearly, so. So did the music and the album, was it familiar to you at all before coming onto the project or did somebody approach to you from straight from the get-go of like, have you heard this first and then go from there? Yeah, no, uh, Jim Burke, who's a friend of mine and uh, produced Green Book and, and other films, um, brought, pitched it to me. Um, and I said, actually at that moment, I said no because I didn't think it sounded very interesting, you know, because I thought it had sound, sounded too much like searching for Sugar Man. Um, and, you know, I didn't want to do something that's been done before. Um, but then he convinced me to read the article and listen to the music. And when I heard Baby, you know, I don't know if you felt this way, but I felt like I know this song, like I, I've heard this song. And, you know, it's just in the somehow some music just uh, feels that way, like it's been around forever. And I, that's what I felt about Baby. So I was immediately taken taken in by that, so. It, you know, look, I, I almost just want to assume that, because I, mean, I know I've seen the, the behind the scenes footage of Light of the Attic put out for when they were releasing the album, seeing um, Donnie and Joe in the, in the studio, though it wasn't like, I think the control room is not a control room anymore. So obviously these things are there, but you went, like you actually were there filming in those spaces? Yeah. Uh, well, okay. I mean, to be, <laughs> I mean, to be honest, we did kind of um, go out to the farm and that was one of the blessings, certainly of the production and the film is to be able to shoot actually on the location. Um, and some of these, some of the, of the interiors but the practice place, we had so much to shoot in there. Honestly, we built the practice place interior um, to allow for that, you know, because we didn't want to mess up the practice place, the real practice place with us kind of coming in or moving walls and things like that. So um, that part we we reconstructed, which I think the art department did a great job on. So The other thing I love about the way you, know, you laid it all out was is that Yes, there are that there's the, the cathartic moments for him at the end when he finally does kind of open up enough to talk to his father and his brother in a certain way. But in the meantime, you're going through the film, you don't get those immediate, you know, answers for, for yourself as a viewer. You know, you go from, you, as a good example, when he brings in uh, his wife and his band to kind of help out uh, and they kind of get into that row after the practice. It doesn't go from them talking about it then and apologizing or anything like that. It goes straight to, your flashback kind of helping explore what those ideas were, why that came out, but then straight to another situation as if 
we didn't have to talk about it or we did talk about it. Again, are those things that are, you know, you planned it out that way, again, like you're talking about earlier from the article or from what you understood about the story, but then also finding Duke talking to Donnie and the family, understanding that, hey, you know, this is just the reality of it. And so that's how I'm going to portray it. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, that, again, was the major challenge was to make sure we didn't, you know, fall back on any Hollywood kind of stereotypes or <laughs> trope, so to speak, in, in the way we did things. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like the whole story, uh, the film itself, you know, you, you could have like a Hollywood ending where they, you know, become big superstars or something that didn't happen. And so I just wanted to be as real as possible. That just that's the way life is, you know, that it's kind of more close to the way life is. Um, hopefully it's still like the way they talk to each other, Donnie and Don Sr. and and Donnie and Joe. Um, like, did those things actually happen? Uh, you know, not exactly. I end up having to write some of that. Um, because, you know, obviously we're not yeah. there at the moment when they resolve everything together. But, um, you know, it felt like it was true to the characters and true to the situation without going overboard. So with the Hollywood thing. Do you have to go to, I mean, obviously, you, obviously you're going to bring it up to, to, to Donnie and the family. But do you have to get everybody to sign off on like who's going to portray each each person? Or it's like, you know, you or... Did you get lucky also as like everybody was happy with who they got chosen to play them? Uh, a little of both. I mean, you know, you, you, you know, they don't get approval over <laughs> casting and things like that, or, or even the script. I mean, as I told them and I told, tell everybody, you know, like Brian Wilson or whatever other people we've, we've kind of portrayed, you know, this is my version of okay. your life. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that somebody couldn't do it differently or whatever, but if you're going to do it with me, you got to trust me. And then you get to know each other more and they're able to trust me. And so that's really what it comes down to. They don't, no, they don't have approval rights over various things. We certainly did talk to Donnie and, and everybody about who was going to be in the movie. Um, and so they were, yeah, were all excited. Um, so they're very simple people, and, and, and a, as you can imagine. Um, and even though we shot on location, right with right there with the family round, uh, you know, I can say safely say that the people I met originally, the Emerson family that I met originally, and the uh, family I know now, and that saw the movie and. and are no different. Like they haven't yeah. changed. They haven't gone, gotten big heads like, oh, wow, we're getting stars now. I mean, they don't really change. So that's part of the quality that I love about them. Like you said, this is something that came to you. You didn't go hunting this out, but you do have, and look, it's not like 30, 40 years of just music produced films, but whether it's something like you were saying with Brian Wilson with Love and Mercy, or, you know, you've been a producer on a lot of other films. We'll just use The Runaways as, as one example um, that deal with music. Is it something that that's your heart and it makes it easier for you to express or just ha just this just happenstance? This is what happened to happen, came down my way, and that's what it is. No, that's my heart. I mean, uh, you know, I'm a frustrated musician, whatever, um, and I uh, end up channeling my love of music through my work sometimes. I'm lucky enough to be able to do that. Again, you have to make sure that it's always a compelling story or and and has some relevance to today. You know, just making a movie about any musical artist wouldn't do it for me. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think I'm not going to say that everything I do is going to be music related, nor should it be. Um, but yeah, so far, I'm happy that it's taken me this direction so well, that being said like you said you know if you were going to tell another story you know it have to be something that you would find relevant but are there are there acts or musicians or, or people you know just famous you know it could be just a producer somebody that is deep in your heart something you'd like to tell the story of you just haven't figured out the way to do it yet or you're still working on it that you really want to tell that story 
uh, complicated uh, question or the answer. I mean, you know, obviously I love the Beatles. I love, you know, Bruce Springsteen and, you know, different people like Radiohead over the years. Um, but a lot of those people I can't see making a movie about because I'm either too close. Mm. Obviously the Beatles, it's like a totally different thing. It's it's an icon, they're icons. And, and so it's a really tough to make a movie about them. But, you know, people that I admire, uh, you know, it's a little harder to, to be honest, we, when we worked on Brian Wilson, um, you know, we got some people interested that were like writers who were super big Brian Wilson fans. But uh, at the end of the day, it didn't feel like they could be objective about it. So uh, we didn't go in that direction. I just think it's good sometimes if the director, filmmaker, or the writer, um, have some distance from the subject. Um, so that's my personal feeling. Um, so the people that I might want to most do movies about, I, I won't because of <laughs> that, um, which seems antithetical, but, uh, or weird, but anyway, so. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Actually, think, same with you. Thanks for taking the time and happy to, Meet you. Have a great day. Thank you too.